for you. Uh, you know what? Before we go any further, who are you? Who are you? What do you do? Oh, wow. Uh, so I'm Steve Burke. Uh, currently, I help oversee the Quest design team on World of Warcraft. A long, long time ago, we worked together on, on this game that's somehow still playable. Very playable. Oh, Who, Luckland. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Why are Reveal you us the me? stories of Luckland development. We're, we're definitely going, we're, we're going to get into that. I, I would say for this, you got to give us the full deal. So, like, you've got to tell us how you even arrived at Sony before Luckland happened. Oh, that's a crazy story. So, I had been, um, I've been a gamer since I was tiny, right? Atari 2600 in everything pretty much uh, since then. Uh, played Dungeons and Dragons like crazy as a kid. Um, and then got into uh, kind of high pressure straight commission sales of all things and did that for a long time did that for about 15 years and i ended up working with a guy named tony robbins who's a big um sales trainer uh and personal coach and in in different things so i ended up doing some stuff with him i set up my own business where i was a contractor for him and that's when everquest came out and i played everquest a lot uh we talked the other day you just you know no no game before or since then has had me just like shaking with adrenaline at three o'clock in the morning uh, just the so many crazy stories and everquest that you just don't get anywhere else uh, so Tony Robbins was really big on, on asking people all kinds of, you know, life, life questions. Like if you could see yourself in five years, your perfect life, what would that be like? And all those kinds of things. And I'd been around him enough and I'd heard this enough. I started asking myself these questions. Right. And I didn't like sales. I was good at it, but I didn't like it. And I liked EverQuest and like right around that time. Uh, EverQuest had an, if you guys remember this, had a little pop up uh, on the launcher that said that they were hiring GMs. And I looked it up and it was right down the street from me. I was living in San Diego. So, uh, and we had just had uh, our first kid. So I did what any responsible parent would do. And I promoted one of my guys to run my business for me. And I signed on as a temporary employee, I think for like nine bucks an hour back then, to be a GM on EverQuest. And I gave myself a year to do that. And either I was going to become a developer or I was going to go back to my other life. And uh, it was almost a year to the week that I got brought up. Uh, I was a, uh, what was it, apprentice uh, designer there for a while. Yeah. So we knew it was kind of in the wings. I was waiting in the wings, but it was almost a week to that year day that they brought me up. Yeah, because you were, you were the apprentice that I could find to be the apprentice to. It's kind of how it wound up working out for me. Like you were, you were the, the original mentor which uh, is a scary thought. It is scary. Yeah, I just looked down on the pit and I said, who here needs the most help? <laughs> no. No, you were, you, you were one of those guys. I mean, we had guys down there that were clearly, they were there for a summer job and they would just do stupid stuff. They'd come in uh, in all kinds of different states of mind and they would just, summon people randomly and change their names and cause all kinds of stress and just get fired just, you know, for, for giggles. So, uh, there were a few of us that were there for, for real. Yeah. No. Yeah. That, that became, it's funny because those, those people wound up becoming the team. 
over time. It yep. was just, you, you could spot them and it, it, it just kind of happened. But yeah. So during that, during that apprentice stage, like, I don't know, I don't know if you've got like GM stories or, or anything from like sort of the GMing period that stands out or if it just was like, I just remember your apprentice work more than anything. So yeah, the GM stuff, right? I mean, I was there to become a developer, right? Mm. So I wanted to make a mark and to stand out. You know, I was talking to, back then it was Bill Coyle uh, is, is one of the, the guys who took mercy on me and kind of handed me some, some work. I got to do some, uh, some write-ups on some lore and, and some different things. Um, in the GM pit, I remember specifically, uh, I did a thing. So I was the GM on Rallosec, which was a PVP server. So that was one of the things I did, right? It's like, yeah, give me the toughest server and I'll get this thing out of control. Uh, it was, it was crazy, but it was, the days went by pretty fast. It was pretty entertaining. Um, so I did a thing once I remember where uh, there was a Nagafen raid and they were working their way down to Nagafen. And as they were doing that, I was playing with my new toys, all these new tools, and I was emoting for Nagafen as they were approaching his lair. And, uh, you know, every time they'd make it, you know, it, it, a little bit closer, I'd throw out, you know, throw out a couple of emote lines and they were going nuts. So, so much that they, they wrote in, and I remember we had a, a GM team meeting like every week, I guess. Do you remember those? No, I've forgotten them. I'm trying to remember her name. So there was, there was Rod. Anyway, we, we had, a, we had a, a meeting and in the meeting, um, I think she was like the lead GM. I don't remember the titles back then, mm -hmm. but she read this letter to, to all of us uh, on the GM team. And it was this letter from one of these people who was in that raid, who was just gushing, right? Oh, I had the time of my life. This was so amazing. Oh my gosh. We were all on the edge of our seats. It just made the whole thing came alive. And so she read this, this letter to us and I was like, oh, wow, that's really cool. You know, halfway through, I recognized what what they were talking about and at the end she's like so good job if you do it again you're fired and i thought that was awesome so they were very um you you saw what the 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 gm crew was like right and if they had given everybody in that room license to do that kind of thing you can imagine yeah chaos what would have happened so I thought that was pretty funny. It was just this gushing letter. She's like, good job. If you do it again, you're fired. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. And it wasn't a joke. I, I it wasn't. You people saw people. Fired. Boom. Oh, man. You saw people every week, man, left and right. And sometimes, like I said, it was them just kind of falling on their own sword. They were just there for giggles anyway. Yeah. Uh, other like, times it wasn't. No, I, I remember one time I was like, um, such and such was almost fired. And when they came skulking out of uh, the the boss's office, someone laughed at the fact that this person was like head down skulking, and the person that laughed was immediately fired. And I was just like, "Oh shit, that can happen!" I just moved all the way that. across country to try to get a job as a developer to get on this team. This is my my passion in life, and you can get you can get off that quickly. I am not going to do anything wrong. Same here, right? So that was, it was like skinnier teeth. So I'm, it was high stakes for me, right? Mm. I just had a kid. I, my wife, man, bless her soul. I don't know how she let me do this, but it was, nope, I'm going to, I'm going to promote this guy who seems to be pretty okay. Let him run that. And I'm going to go be a temp employee over here high stakes and yeah watching people just go down in flames left and right do you remember there was a guy i remember i don't know who it was uh somebody went and you remember back then we had those weird screen savers with like words that would or whatever patterns that would bounce around your monitor when you afk 
And somebody put a disparaging comment about George Scotto on everybody's desktop. So, and he was he was the the the, the high boss of bosses within customer service, y'all. He became that right, right. Yeah. yeah, he wasn't there when I first got there, but yeah, he became kind of the force of stability, I guess, in that space. <laughs> yeah, and he was a bit that. of a he was a hothead, right? He was he was. Yeah. You didn't want to play around. He was, he yeah. didn't have uh, a lot of patience for that. So he he saw this, and if you can imagine, he took offense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he demanded to know who did. I don't think they ever found out who did that. That was pretty funny. Yeah, it was. It was interesting times. Like if I had honestly, it one if I wasn't so scared shitless half the time of not making it to the big leagues. And if I'd been smarter, I'd just been writing down notes constantly because there was just constantly some weirdness or goofiness or craziness, whether it be customers or employees. So I sat, when I first got there, I sat between um, Javier and Lawrence Poe. I don't think you were there yet. Uh -uh, I wasn't because they were already on the team when I got there, I guess. Right. So I sat between them as a GM and those two, man, just incessant. They, they were there to, to make my life miserable. I can imagine. It was, it was funny looking back on it. But some yeah. days it was just like, oh, my God, I got to sit somewhere else. Those guys, they just do these little voices and just try to be as annoying as they possibly could. It's like, dude. I remember because I eventually wound up in an office with you and Lawrence Poe. And at some point, I think they stuffed Rich in there as well. Poor Rich. Rich. Yeah. Or was that only, only for the one Super Weekend project? But I could have sworn you wound up in the office of Elite Game Designers. Oh, Dick Fluid, you mean? Yes. Okay. Yes. He lets me <laughs> know. <laughs> he's gonna watch this he's gonna come after you he is he is he likes it when i call him that mm. all right so so uh so yeah sitting between those two guys they they made it it, it was just their pastime to try to get under my skin that was pretty fun so then you became an apprentice somehow um you, you probably used your charm and uh like salesmanship ability yeah and, that's long gone now <laughs> and then all right so like what was what was becoming an apprentice like and what did you start like where did you start oh man i've forgotten as much as i remember back then it, it was uh It was usually back then it was the path. So EverQuest is built on this engine that was a, a racing game, right? Or at least part of it, the pathing for sure. Um, and I don't know if players ever caught on to this, but the pathing in the game isn't always perfect. And I don't think anybody knows. It's a little, little known secret. Uh, so one of the ways onto the apprentice, onto the design team was to apprentice as a pather. It was just like one guy's thankless job to do nothing but pathing in the game. Uh, and it, that was Lawrence and it was perfect for him. I don't know. He just had a mind for it. He, he, he kind of loved it. So I didn't go that route. He had taken that. And I, I want to say I worked with, yeah, I worked with Bill Coyle on some stuff I worked on. Oh, I worked on uh, the cleric epic. And I think the shadow knight epic. That's I, I'll, I'll go ahead and say that. I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I preface most things with, I believe this is correct. I'm pretty sure that's right. So that was cool. Uh, I don't know if I did that as an apprentice or if I did that once I got upstairs, I'm not sure which. Um, but by the time we dug into Velius, I was I was making stuff, which was awesome. Um, 
in Bill Coyle was real helpful to me. Super nice guy. I don't know where he's at these days. I'd love to know. Have you talked to him? Um, I'm still trying to track him down. Um, I just had some questions about him earlier. Um, I actually have a message up. We'll go through that story later. Um, uh, someone that knew him in real life or knows him in real life. So there are a lot of good people guy. I'm still just trying to what track down. Um, but yeah, the the Velius work. So that that's basically when I remember working with you. It was like Velius stuff, like that era. That you'll have to. I I'm sure you'll be able to spark some memories. It's it's a bit of a blur. That was just crazy time, right? We just kind of lived at the office. Yeah, well, and that was sort of the pre, like for me, that was my first opportunity. Like Jeremy Ellis, had, he was the first one to show me the database. We had him on a few weeks ago. Oh, hell, actually maybe even a month or two ago at this point. Um, but he was like the first person that I actually got to see the database. But then like, <laughs> comp yeah, and like, oof. And then <laughs> the content implementation was like, uh, it was... I, at some point I moved next to you because it was beneficial to have the uh, aspiring apprentice sit next to the apprentice or whatever the bullshit was that then got us to be able to sit there and talk if I remember correctly. Um, or I could just be making all of this up. Um, Super and, weird pecking order, right? It's so funny. Yeah. It was like the, the guy next it. to the guy to the, the guy. And the whole thing was uh, it, at my level, I was told we may never have another apprentice again. But if we do have another apprentice again, because we may not ever have a, another design opening again. So if we have a design opening, then one of the apprentices will fight their way in and, you know, it'll be like fight to the death. And it then totally was. it will be somebody can Arena. backfill maybe an apprentice slot. And I was like, and you were ruthless about it. You're very professional. You had a goal. You were like, I'm not bullshitting around. Like I'm going to do this. So I was like, all right, this guy seems to have a plan. I'll use his plan as my plan. And then I'll try to basically just draft in behind this guy. Um, and so Velius is when I remember like all of the discussion, that's really when the invisible man craziness began. And I'm looking at some of it in action unless they change it, you know, in Luckland, but like all of the, Oh, we can trigger random shit by doing these things that weren't intended. So I guess that's kind of my thing, right? Is um, let's call it innovation. That's a nice <laughs> word. Uh, it's just hacky, right? Just super hacky stuff. I, I remember, um, so back as a GM, I remember we used to get to do these events, right? If you get your cue nice and low. And so that was my way of entertaining myself, like is trying to get Ralph Zex petitions down to nothing and, and then just hand a few off to the guides. And I had a lead guide there that was really good. I wish I could remember her name too. Uh, maybe she's around. Zatosha? So Lydia? No. Jill? I started with an R. I think I'm trying to go through there because there wasn't. I don't even know if I'd. Robin? It's been so long. It's been mm. a long time. I don't. Anyway, I, w I would yeah, team sorry. up with, with her. No, I, I'm sorry. I, 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 I probably should have studied up a little bit. I don't know if I could have found <laughs> her name. She was super helpful. Ralisek was a nightmare. And guides, man, what a thankless job. Those guys were just heroes. Uh, so I teamed up with her, and I remember she was a – got to make sure I get my lore right – dark elf. And I was a human. And I don't remember which zones we started in, but we started – it like opposite well not opposite sides of the world but in zones far apart from one another and uh we would rally our allies right so we would come in and appear as uh, uh an avatar and just hey w w there's going to be a war i don't remember exactly the premise but we made up some some cool fiction and you know there's going to be a war march with me kind of thing and you'd we'd go from zone to zone and just gather this oh yeah because Rallis, that's perfect right and yeah we didn't even have to uh, we didn't even have to uh hack anything for this so it was just gradually and we built we 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 met i think in i want to say karana is that right probably it yeah. is a place you can meet. We'll say it. We'll say it's right. Then, then cool. Then that must be it. Uh, and and there was just this huge, huge fight that somehow didn't 
didn't break the servers because it was it was a lot of people. Uh, those were pretty epic. That was fun. And that was something that you could do. It was unique to a PVP server. So that was kind of cool. Anyway, so as I was doing these events, right, I'm thinking, man, it's as a player, as a player, that was just the idea. It's one of the things about EverQuest that just, I mean, I loved the game 100%. But when, as a player, even before I got on the team, when you would see these GM events that could happen, or you'd hear about them, right? Even if mm. they were rare enough that, you know, you might never see one, but you'd hear about them. And just the idea of, hey, this could happen in this world was just mind blowing to me. It's a play just so, I mean, the game was compelling already, but just, oh, wow, dynamic stuff on top of it. Mm -hmm. So that was a really big thing that um, I wanted to find a way to, uh, to reproduce that feeling. I finally did get to participate in one. And it was, um, I'm not even going to try to remember the bird people's name. The Do you remember? AVX? It was the AVX, yeah. yeah. The, there was a GM that was an AVX, and there were a couple others, and I ended up getting the kill and getting the loot. It was just one of those, I, I don't even think I could use it, but it was just still a really cool experience. So, yeah, the Invisible Men thing, I was, I was, uh, really big on being able to kind of recreate that stuff. And I went nuts with it, as you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I remember the cold ring more. Um, and that's that's a huge favorite. Uh, and it'd be cool to just sort of anything you can remember about it, go through that. There's Hollow Shade more. Um, oh, there were the smaller gosh. events. We were talking we about Hollow PTSD. Shade more earlier. It's like. Um, Sorry, guys. That was yeah. pretty indulgent. <laughs> Yeah, it's so weird, man. So thinking back at just how hard I, how much harder I worked than I than I needed to, and then I probably should have on some of those some of those things. Hollow Shade More was just this crazy like in my this is what I want to see in my head. I want players to be able to take over a zone just by manipulating things right to change the mm -hmm. population be able to affect the world was something yeah. that i was really really excited about um that was a rabbit hole that was a crazy i mean thinking about our tool what we had to work with back then you you gotta you gotta remember right when we're developing with this tool which is basically what just a relational database yeah that's it at the time that was it and it was, um, you would have to, what we would call now, just kind of design blind, right? Mm -hmm. So you'd be, you'd sit there, you'd go through the world and get coordinates for where you think you want something to spawn, which is, which is fine for just basic population and just doing stuff. But when you want to do anything that's involved or anything dynamic at all, you just, it's self-mutilation. It's just, it's just terrible. Well, uh, you, you've got to bring down you. I remember you've got to ask everybody, all the developers in the room is like, OK, I've, I've entered some data. Enough that I feel like um, it's dangerous for me to implement any more without checking what I've done because I'm building a house of cards. Right. So you've got to ask everybody in the room, hey, is it cool if I bring down the server? Because we had one server for all of us. Remember that? I don't. I don't. Oh, my gosh. Crazy. So we had one server for all of us, and we had to ask everybody in the room, like, hey, I need to bring this. I need to respawn the server. Everybody cool with that. And it was a 45-minute ordeal for to bring down a server and bring it back up. Was that, was that a test? Was that for test? Or was it like, did we only have a single development server? Did, yeah, we didn't have individual single, development servers? No, single development server for all of us. And we had, and it was a 45 minute bounce to get to look at your data. Crap. Like, it I was don't insane. remember, I don't remember it that way, but as you say it, like I could see it making sense. And I could also see how that would probably influence the way that work was structured. Like, because I do remember, like, basically I remember designing the relationships for like what I wanted the logic to be, um, with the relational database in mind and I could basically do it in a word doc and then go create it 
in the actual database once I figured the logic, like once we got used to doing the hacky invisible man shit, like yeah. I, I knew how I was gonna structure it. And so it would make sense that we'd do a chunk of it and then push and then come back and check. But man, that's more brutal than I remember. It was nuts. I don't even know if by the time I left, I don't even know if we had individual servers by then. We got um, Carriker. He was around the time you were leaving when we get to that that point. I think, uh, Jonathan, that's when, when you're coming on board, but you can, you can let us know. He's in chat. And so whenever I have a question about like, is this still that way or what was it like, you know, right after I left or whatever, I've, I've just been going to chat. There was a, what was a question I'll hit it before we go much further. Frank DeBank asked, does Eve know what they changed, that they changed a portion of the cleric epic? Do I know that they did? Mm. Is that the yeah. question? That was the question. I didn't know. Okay. I didn't know. Mm. Um, I'll see if Frank follows up with I, that. I don't, I don't blame them. <laughs> Uh, speaking of change, like when we we're talking about the Invisible Man thing, I've been waiting to see if any of it was firing off here. I saw it in the distance, but like there's an example. All of the behavior that you see out here where one NPC says something to the group of NPCs and they either dance or do a move or whatever, that's all just Invisible Men, or unless they changed it, shouting shit in his own right now that we can't hear, telling him to do things. Like the Invisible Text triggering behaviors. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we had. That's that's what we had to do. It, 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 super hacky, and then building on that, right? Like I said, it it was kind of house of cards. That whole ring war thing, man. How how that worked? I it it's it was it was pretty crazy. Just looking back on what we had. Well, the level of complexity too, right? Because not only did you have dozens or a hundred mobs doing things that were listening to stuff i guess um then you had all of the invisible men which like uh, you would need one man under there for like one piece of logic maybe two depending on how you structured it maybe maybe three i guess but like it was so it was a network of them yeah like 100 200 additional npcs under the zone acting as the sort of Rube Goldberg machine or whatever for this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. My process back then and still is right. Is I divorce, I try to divorce myself from the tool. And like, if you look at the tool and the limitations of the tool, it's super confining, like, okay, I can make rare spawns. Mm -hmm. Right. So divorcing myself from that, just like, what, what do I want to see in this game? What do I want to see happen? Right. right? And exactly. then, um, you know, just have fun playing in that kind of mental sandbox of, oh, what if this and this and this. And the, the ring war, that was the 10th in a, in a series of quests, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't know the end from the beginning of that. I remember starting you know, that very first one, I'm like, oh, it'd be really cool to tell this, to actually tell a story, right? There were a lot of local small, there were a couple of quests that kind of fed from one to, to the next, but they were obscure and tough to access, right? Um, so yeah, uh, I remember there, there were a few steps in there that I just had a lot of fun with, right? There were dwarves that came down and attacked an orc camp one stage but yeah it, it was just kind of not thinking about the tool what do i want to see happen what's the story that i want to tell and then once i've got this idea that i'm geeked about okay now how do we make this happen right and you know figuring out oh man is this possible is this impossible well, what, what if i do this okay now i've solved that problem and just gradually like okay now i've got this crazy mess uh, of data it should work nobody's ever done anything like this before let's see if it works right because I, I took advantage of all kinds of weird stuff there was that weird zone reset because we didn't have anything like phasing right we did the thing on the war where it's basically yeah, yeah, shut yeah, down no, the entire a, zone and that was a deliberate like decision then to do that to a zone right all right we're going to drastically change the population 
yeah, and it was it was just using a lot of things in ways they weren't intended to be used. Absolutely, always. That's fine. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was it was a good time. I I had a great time making it. Hollow Shade more. Th that was um, uh, man. I should have talked myself out of that one. It w it was just um, you know, Luckland was nuts. We we definitely left it all on the field for Velius, right? Yeah. Um, we were we were tired <laughs> after that. Even as young as we were, you know, we were pretty exhausted after that. Yeah, because it's a it's a weird kind of spin, right? There's a physical aspect of just that much work, that much time in a chair, but it's also like, by the way, we need you to crank out a shitload of creativity constantly fill all of this with creativity please right and i wouldn't trade it for the world man it was it was that you know when i first when i first took the job it's like can i even do this i i, I was in sales it was a totally different uh uh profession as a kid and i've always been a gamer and as a kid i had uh taught myself how to program when i was mm -hmm. like 14 i had an atari 400 denuser and i always he got the 800 yeah he was he was privileged i had the atari 400 which was a membrane keyboard it was awful it was uh it had a cassette tape drive for storage mm -hmm. taught myself how to program on that and then a few years later uh taking programming in school i had this super dry programming teacher who was teaching assembly language back then 1985 or something and that was such a turnoff for me. And I just kind of took a turn. Yeah. So this was just kind of coming back to that whole like, oh, my gosh, I remember being that kid, just like, oh, I can make things happen with my computer. This is so exciting. In, in that way, one of the things that I actually, I think I liked about how simple the EQ database was once I got used to like the relational DB was it, it provided just enough constraints that I could just focus on the creative part and know, okay, these are roughly the tools that I have. So if, if I just focus on the outcome, um, you know, there'll, there'll be some solution I'm sure we can figure out with, um, what we have. Yeah. Yeah. Just flying blind, right. Just, yeah. just, uh, I'll make it work. I'll, I'll, I'll figure out a way to make it work. Every once in a while you've got a compromise, but really not often. It's something that I tell designers now too, right. Is just get yourself into that space, that mental space of, of having fun, uh, just process wise. Think of those moments in games, any right. games, right. That, that just got your hair standing up. Like, you know, one of my, list is the corpse recovery at three o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. just like wide awake and pumped with adrenaline and having the time of my life yeah i've got to go run a company in a few hours but i gotta get my corpse right yeah uh and just that feeling and just tapping into that feeling and get yourself into that headspace it's it's really an exercise because like like you said i mean it, it is a discipline it's be creative all the time on time mm -hmm. And it's, it is, uh, you know, I, I, I talk to the guys that I work with now all the time. It's like this, we got to not lose sight of how hard this job is. It's right brain, left brain. It's easy, you know, after you've been immersed in it and kind of gone through the crucible that we did back then, it, it, it molds you a bit and you take for granted like, oh, you know, just, you know what to do, just, just make it fun, right? It's you've got to break that down and it, for new people, especially yeah. and and go through that process of, you know, get yourself electrified, find something that you really want to show or tell, look at the space that you have to work with and let it inspire you and, and, and execute something amazing, you know, get, get your, you've got to first, just get yourself into that headspace. And it's a, I think that's where sales helped me in, in this a lot, right? Is with, mm. with sales and especially running a sales team, you'd think they're nothing more different than, than sales and, and game design. But especially what we were doing, high pressure, straight commission sales. Right. If you're, if you're thinking, oh, I had an argument with my wife this morning or, you know, I got 
you know, fender bender on the way to, if whatever, it, there's a million things in the world that you can focus on that are negative. Right, and if you start right. going down that path at all in sales, I'll come talk to you. Listen, go take the rest of the day off, go, you know, shake it off. Cause we've got to be like this powerhouse of, of positivity here and really bolster each other up and, and, and help maintain that, that positivity. That's the only way because it comes through over the phone. Well, back then it was, it, it was over the phone yeah. and it comes through over the phone and, and, and people really uh, respond to that. And it's the same way in games, right? If you're having fun, if you're, if you're super jazzed about what it is that you're going to be putting in and, Oh my gosh, I can't wait for people to, I can't wait to play this. Right. If it's that, it, it, that comes across. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll, sorry, we're all over the place. I want to go back to the crunch brain thing in a minute because it is, it's, it's, it's a lot more than just the fatigue of sitting in a chair, but we did a thing recently where it, it was just kind of a, a cool, um, like milestone for me, uh, because I look at the game as this kind of this veil, right? We've got these ideas, these things that we want to happen. And then we've got the tool which can be kind of the enemy. We've got any negativity that's floating around in the room that can, yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. What comes out the other end, right, is is the truth. That's that's the truth. There's no getting around it. So when you're watching a stream or play through your stuff, there's no, there's no room for anything, but, you know, this is the reality. If, if the thing that you just spent five hours on you know, gussing up and printing it up and you were all geeked about it. If they just ran past it, didn't even look at it. <laughs> dude, you can't be mad at that guy. That's how, right. the, the, you know, this is this, the game space that you've got to play in. And this is how people are playing your game. And you've got to be really familiar with that. Um, EverQuest, we talked about this the other day, EverQuest plays so much differently than, say, World of Warcraft. It's it's a very different game. Yeah. And players... Uh, uh, I, I, Sorry, I'm just blabbing. If we've got questions, feel free to. Oh, we'll, we'll get we'll, right after right after a little bit more blabbing. We'll we'll go back and pick up some questions. I'll I'll, I'll stay on top of it. So, but yeah, yeah uh, knowing your game, knowing yeah. how people play your game is a thing, right? Uh, it's it's important to know how much bandwidth I call it like player bandwidth. I, my designer designers are probably just sick of, of me saying it, but it's it's a thing that you really need to pay attention to, right? In EverQuest, your bandwidth is very different because you play the game so much slower. I'm going to stay here and I'm going to camp and I'm going to fight these guys. Yeah. And, I, and I'm going to be really careful. So any bits of story that can trickle in, whether it's aggro text or death Absolutely. text or an item that drops off of this guy, you're going to absorb all of that. Absolutely. Right? In a game like WoW, it plays at a very different pace. And you've just got to know, you know, people that are just playing to play, they're going to get the quest title. <laughs> that's about mm -hmm. that's about all you you can really count on injecting in. Everything else has to come through the world and 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 hit you. So just being aware of um, of how people play your game, it's going to it's going to instruct you. It's going to tell you where to spend your bucks and not to spend them the way I did in Hollow Shade more. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the Hollow Shade more was it was a tough one, man. Because I remember I was doing a lot of the busy work on that, like the stuff. If it's like, hey, we need we need trash items or we need you know things like that, because of the amount of like work that you were putting into just building the logic for this thing and trying to get it to work and not break when this this faction wins versus that faction then what happens over here and like the level of complexity that was a uh, that that uh, so there, some of the questions that came in um like they i think they lead up to the insanity that was like holiday more so there's a question of like the ring of fire remember the gremlin oh yeah i do yeah, yeah that was another thing i was dying to get in the game yeah it just I still want. I still want to get. I mean, there's there are elements of that that are in other games now. Yes, and it's like, and it was funny, like seeing seeing something like that for the first time in action as a designer was immediately like, oh shit! Like, if I know how to do this now, now I can use this in a different way, right? Like, I can I can make a similar event. And I remember there was like a running joke at one point was like, somebody asked, "Are you guys going to turn everything into ring events?" And it was just like. Yeah, but 
man, you're just so amped on like you figure out this new this new stuff, and it's like, all right, how do we make variations on that? Um, all right, so before we get back to that, let me hit some of these questions because they are building up. Um, okay. Let's see, uh, we we covered the cleric one. Um, there was a response in from Frank about the original cleric epic had you fight Zordak, Ragefire, and Nagy's room. Uh, which created a block because it was contested. Now you turn an item into a human form, Zordak and Soul B, and fight the final. Uh, ah, and the final fight is in Skyfire. Um, so there's an update. There. Awesome. Um, let's see. Um, what was your what was your GM name? Do you remember, Steve? Uh, Akiris. A K K I R U S. That's right um let's see bunny asked what does being a quest designer for a while involve and of the content from shadowlands you can talk about what's been your favorite to design we're jumping ahead a a bit but if you want to that's a i mean there's a big question and one that i should probably dodge so okay um yeah shadowlands has been amazing to work on it uh I'll just put a pin in that. I don't, yeah. I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to, there's all kinds of stuff that's going to be coming out soon. I hope you guys love it. Okay. Uh, um, what, what's it like to become a, a wow quest designer was, is, was that the question? Yeah. Or, well, let me make sure I'm reading it correctly. Uh, what's being a quest designer for wow involve? Oh, okay. Uh, so that's a great question. And it is, um, it's huge. One of, one of uh, a buddy of mine that, that uh, was a quest designer on WoW for a long time, we, we do these things called slash learns, where basically we get up and kind of speak and it's recorded and it's just uh, kind of in a bank like, hey, here's a lesson or a thought or whatever, just it's a talk. Mm. And he did a talk about being a quest designer and he, he'd studied our tool, which sorry for the tangent, but I remember, so I, I, I will say when I got, when I got to, to WoW, it was um, it was amazing, right? I'd always played tons of Blizzard games, and it was just uh, I was wide eyed, uh, kind of starstruck. Just amazing people around there, and they I remember Jeff Kaplan showing me the tool. It's a proprietary tool, and he's like, "Okay, yeah, you've got some you know some really valuable experience, and we really want to get your eyes on this, and we want you to tell us how we can make it better." And I look at this tool and I can literally see the world and I can drop stuff into the world. I, I, I come from a relational database with an yeah. access front end. I'm looking at, I'm like, dude, this is, I'm in heaven. This is crazy. I, I couldn't imagine ways to, this has improved things beyond what, what I could ever imagine. So being a quest designer, uh, my point was in his talk is we looked at all of the design teams and the cool thing about wow is that you can really specialize in a thing and get really good at a thing. And what is that cat doing? Are you just now seeing it? <laughs> I didn't do that, did I? No. Okay. Uh, so um, he, he looked, oh, uh, so you can focus on on a very specific thing. We've got designers that just focus on making our encounters great, like raids and dungeons, and that's awesome. Right. It's it's. I'm sure other people have brought this up, but in EverQuest, we did it all, right? Yeah. We, at the beginning of expansion, you kind of, we drew straws or we, we said, this is the zone I want. We somehow figured out what zones we were going to be um, working on. And then we all just kind of broke the huddle. And at the end, we get back together and we got what we got, which is just looking back on it, just amazing. But we did everything, right? We did the spawning. We did um, whatever insanity we could get ourselves in trouble with. Dungeons, itemization, encounters, we did all of that, right? And it was awesome to be able to to be able to get your head wrapped around all of those things. It's great on the team that I'm on now that you can really specialize on one facet and get really good at that. Um, Sometimes it's like, oh, I really want to work on itemization. I really want to work on encounters. But at the end of the day, there's nothing to me more fulfilling than just that, hey, here's the content that the player's going to play. 
sorry, getting back to my point, his 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 talk was on the fact that with Quest designers, more than you know, looking at all of the designers, and they they're kind of siloed sections of the tool that they that they work on, and Quest designers touch almost the entire tool. So it's 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 broad. We get people sometimes that come in and uh, they think that it's like 95% just writing and it's not, it's the yeah. inverse, it's 5% writing. It's, it's, it's spawning, uh, bringing a place to life, telling you stories. Yeah, and, and I mean, that's one of those points over the years, like um, I think it was really instilled in me during those early Everquest days if I don't know if it's intentional because of the limitations we had or whatever, but it's been sort of the mantra with every team since it's like, there's so much that you can show in the world, right? Like you're not here to write your epic novel. Like you're, you're here to provide a context that helps tell a story, but also let the player sort of fill in the gaps and have their story. Um, and, and when you, when you have all of those things, zone population, itemization, flavor items, mobs flavor mobs all that shit flavor text you can tell a lot of story especially like i said in everquest right yeah just the way you play that game you you absorb everything the bandwidth is different yeah it's it's such a great point yeah when you mentioned that like it's like i think it's just a, a really solid articulation of something we've we've been talking a lot about um in the stream the last few weeks you're just pacing and talking about the difference between the games and stuff. And I think that's a great summary of it. Um, there was a question uh, from Zoidberg that said, speaking of luck and creativity, if you could storyboard the, artic uh, storyboard the artistic direction, what were those grand ideas? What do, you, what do you remember of sort of like those big story plots and all the other stuff that? For Luckland specifically? Um, so that would be cool. <laughs> uh, so, if, um, I started, I, I wandered off. I, I apologize. We've, we've been working real hard to get uh, the, this, this project out the door and my, my brain's a little bit fuzzy right now. So I'm sorry I bounce around so much. Oh, don't, don't apologize for that. They watch a stream. That's all I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was mentioning at the end of Velius, right? We collapsed in a heap uh, as designers and, you know, I think we all knew, right, that we had it, we had advanced the bar, which is a big deal to me, right? I mean, just looking at where games are, you touched on it before, right? When it's like, oh, wow, I learned how to do this thing. I can do this thing. Well, now what does that mean? What, what, what can I do with that as a baseline? What can I innovate? What can I do now? It's, it's so fun, right? To, to, mm -hmm. to feed off each other that way. It's just like, Oh, look, check out what this, this guy caught. Well, if he did that, you know, your mind automatically spins. We all think a little bit different and put our own creativity on it. It's just like, Oh, I could, I could do boom, 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 boom. And, and we just feed off of each other and hopefully advance the bar. And I feel like we, we did in Velius, uh, but we were tired at the end. And, um, so I'll talk about that for a second. It is, it's a different kind of tired. It's a brain tired. It's a weird, it's a weird thing. Um, it feels like a clenched fist in your head to me. I, maybe it's different for different people, but it just gets so like, just, you know, it, it gets harder to process, harder to spit mm -hmm. stuff out and just, you know, I hope I'm making sense kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and, it, you know, it's just like, you know what it's like? It's like a professional athlete. That's what we are. We're a professional. Athlete. Basically. Like that. Basically. But it is. It's a different kind of tired, man. It's, 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 uh, it's draining. And I think, and then there's this weird after effect that I get every time, which is uh, for a couple months afterwards where it's like, oh, okay, great. Now I can relax. And your brain doesn't do that, right? If it's been clenched for six months or however long, right? And you, you tell it, okay, cool, let go. Everything's fine. We've done it. Yay, high five, be done. Your brain's like for a couple of months, it's just still, uh, it won't let you relax. And you have this feeling in the back of your head that's like, oh my gosh, I've got to go. 
I, I've got to go fix stuff, right? You're still dreaming in database and, and stuff like that. Yeah. So it takes a little while to come out. And it, it's a it's a process, man. It's it, it, it just being able to kind of cope with that, ride, ride that wave out, recognized, hey, this is what's going on with me. And um, it'll pass. Everything will be fine. So have you, we talked about this a, a, while, a little while back. Um, as part of that sort of post-launch process, the thing that I described and um, I forget who I was talking to, but then a few people in chat, they're also like developers. They, they said they run into it too. I, yeah, there's that bit of relaxation, like, the, oh, okay, whew, I get depressed. Like I get depressed, like as soon as I'm done, like it, it's almost like, to me, the, the clinch fist thing, I run into more like, I almost feel like I'm, I'm running super clean, even if I'm getting a little like loopy, it's like I'm running my cleanest until I hit the finish line. And it's almost like sort of dying on the finish line each time. And afterwards, I'm just like, I don't know what it is. It's the weird, like, even if it's the end result is great and people love it. I'm still, there's something weird that happens that kind of makes me feel depressed. Kind of makes me want to get immediately back into the process as soon as I can muster it. Um, I, I think, I, yeah, I'm, I'm no psychiatrist. I, I, oh, damn it. I, 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 th I think that there's definitely, it, I don't know, it's almost like retreating because what happens is you shut all the rest of your life off, right? When, when we're working really hard and, and every waking hour we're just focused on, and hopefully focused on, hey, you know, we've got something good here and I'm just going to work extra hard to make it that much better, to get yeah. this extra thing in, right? That's that's when it's great. When it's bad, it's like, oh my gosh, we're just trying to string things together. And, it, <laughs> and yeah. thankfully, I haven't had a lot of that. It's been more the the former. Yeah. But, but either way, right? I think it's that like, oh man, what do I do? What do I do now, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not super busy. I don't have to rush back in and stare at a computer screen. What am I? What do I do now? And for me, at least, it's just that, like, you've got to tell yourself that, yeah, what you're feeling right now is going to pass. Because I, yeah, it's probably a form of depression. Same same thing. It's just a different, it's such a weird switch. And it just takes time to acclimate to a normal life again. And just recognizing that it does take that time to go back to normal, I think, is, for me, at least, it, it just that, like, tell myself, no, everything's fine. Just yeah, I, ride, ride this out. Yeah. And it was funny because at least at Sony, we were almost always immediately committed to try to get another expansion out in six months. So it's not like there was a big gap. Um, so that helped. So, so I will go back to answering that question. I, gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm scattered. So uh, <laughs> the, the Luckland thing. So we collapsed in a heap and literally it wasn't even, a, it wasn't even a week. It was probably like, I think a couple of days after, that Jeff Butler came in with this pile of like a script, right? And it was Shadows of Luckland. And uh, Amanda Flock, I love her to death. She had written this pitch and good for her, but we were all like, Jeff Butler just came, this is what we're making next. And we had zero voice in that. And that felt really bad, I think, for a lot of us. Um, just... Was it was it all of it? Or like what all? Because there were so, so many different things going on. I mean, there was like the whole thing. It was well thing, thought out, fraud, right? Was... Yeah, I'm not saying, you know, we had everything down. It, it, but I think she had the zones, I think. Okay. I have no idea, yeah. It was it was enough that like it was definitely like cats on the moon, right? This is what we're making, <laughs> and it, it's like okay, we 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 don't get you know it, it it just felt bad. It's like after what we had done, I don't think that we as a design team would would have gone in that direction, um, but you know we made we made the best of we made it. the best of it. Yeah. Do you remember what all you worked on? Uh, there was a there was a like ten minutes ago when we, we first started talking about the hollow shade. Like I instinctively just got up and started running to see if I could go there, yeah. but uh, that's probably not the best use of our time here. Do you remember the 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 various zones that you worked on? Uh, I can try. Let's see. I did hollow shade more. 
I did Grimling Forest, which had a, I want to say had a dungeon in it, right? There was the dungeon that had the ring. Was that the Acrylia? Fire or whatever. Yeah. I think, right? I always ask chat. They know everything. Oh, good. Um, and was it Luckland that we did AAs? The chat, do you know Luckland start? When did AAs or did they come in? Yeah. Yeah. Acrylia, yeah, yes. Forest, yeah. Luckland AAs, yes. Luckland AAs. So, yeah, that was, um, I remember. <laughs> it's kind of surreal thinking back on it. Like, you know, the programmer saying we've done it, we've hit the cap 32,000 hit points is all a mob can have. And we can't let players get much more powerful. And this is, this is it, which was like, how can you say that? It's impossible. We've got this train that's moving. All we, we, we need to solve this problem. Um, and so AAs was just my like, okay, you put me in a box. How are we going to grow the player? And um, I, I talked to everybody on the d design team. And then me and Todd Schmidt went to the boardroom, which was a room with a board in it. Mm. Uh, mm. Fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> it was the only room with a board in it, I think. <laughs> And yeah, been. so we just, um, I remember just filling that board up and Todd Schmidt did all the heavy lifting on it. But yeah, just, we've got to, we've got to give the player something to work towards, something to spend that. So it was just this hacky solve for that problem. And it's interesting to see how, how that has also made it into so many different games. Yeah, there was, there was a lot of that during, during that period. Um, you know, it's, things going even back to if you look at like the wave event you know if you look at a ring event if you look at some of like just the dynamic dynamic elements in and things like the wars and all of that um those those quickly became standards right like i think there for a few year period a lot of standards were established um another question that came up was do you remember the first raid that you developed No. Uh, I know, let's see, we redid a lot of raids. I know that that's the first thing that comes to mind. Um, did some tweaking in Velius after Bill left. I, I, I remember touching a lot of raids. I can't remember. I don't know that I made a raid in EQ. Uh, aside from... If you, I, I would say that you could count like the Ten Spring War as a raid. Oh, okay. And yeah, than that. Yeah, I was explaining to people that Narandai's items were were because people still remember TDE and they still remember Ranadin, even today. When oh we're, yeah, we're yeah. You guys de decoded that, huh? Somebody mm -hmm. broke that code. That's a pretty masterful job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that guy. That was good. That was fun. That was good. Good guild. We got the, some stuff uh, done. The the Acrylia event would qualify as a raid. Jonathan says. The uh, Ring of Fire thing. Cool. Interesting. Okay. I remember it. Like for some reason, I, I remember it being kind of a, a cozy little event. I love the the models and stuff. Those guys were really silly. Um, yeah. Yeah, I loved how they came out. That yeah. was, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of internal jokes about those guys. And then, uh, yeah, that's it, yeah, trying to make the game do things that it wasn't supposed to do. And that it's funny, just the evolution, right? Because I did the same thing when I first went to World of Warcraft. Um, and then just learning that whole like, so this is a good example, right? Everything I touched, I just wanted to go nuts on. I just wanted to make it the most amazing thing I, I possibly could. And mm -hmm. there was no sense of pacing. But it, but again, going back to what we were talking about with the band, just the way that you play EverQuest, the pacing is so much different, right? So mm -hmm. 
I felt like everything, every nook and cranny of the game could be a thing and somebody's going to spend some time here and they're going to flesh it out. So different game, different game, different, different thing. Um, the meow asked, Steve wanted to ask, what was, what was your approach to designing a zone? Where do you start and what do you try to achieve? Uh, for EverQuest. Does it differ between? Oh, big time. Yeah. Very different. Absolutely different. Um, and I can, I guess I can talk about that a little bit. So, yeah, I mentioned, so for EverQuest, it was really just um, that whole getting in that space of, um, as a player, what could I imagine happening, right? I mean, that was the magic of, of, EverQuest for me, right? As opposed to a single player game. A single player game is trying to do a specific thing or tell a specific story or have, you know, just a, zero in on certain mechanics and, and they're great. I love single player games. But playing EverQuest, it was just that like anything is possible here, right? It was so mm -hmm. just that dynamic thing. And that that, you know, oh, I heard of a GM thing happen or, you know, an event happening, a dynamic event happening. And it just like blew my mind, like, oh my gosh, what's not possible here, right? So my approach with EverQuest was really that, just like, what's not, what would I, as a player, what would blow my mind, right? Yeah. If I, you know, if if I saw, I don't even remember, Sonic Wolf fighting an owlbear, is that right? I think it is. And I got to jump in, and it's amazing if I got that right, uh, and, and I got to jump in and affect that fight and something happened because of that, right? If I could impact the world was a very big thing for me back then. So it's it's crazy. Um, and I've been thinking about this a lot. And I'm glad another example of it just popped up while you're here. Because I, I meant to mention it to you when we spoke uh, last night. Angry Johnny asks, can Steve give us a hint to some of the unsolved quests still around? Right? And so that question comes up regularly here a lot of people go hey what quest did we miss what haven't we found right and this is a 20 year old game yeah that people have been actively playing for 20 years yeah and uh, you know reverse engineering and rebuilding and yet people still believe that there's shit that hasn't been found to me that speaks that's volumes it. about whatever quests like that yeah that's part of that magic no that's it right is is that um it's not that roadmap and it was something for me to adjust to when i got on world of warcraft right it's a very different philosophy mm -hmm. um but there's magic in that in that like what haven't we found yet what and, and that just ties right into what I was talking about, about building zones, about just like, yeah. hey, about creating things that players can like find and, and blow their minds and see and discover for themselves. I remember just watching the watching the message boards back then, right, of just the theory craft of, uh, oh, I did, you know, what, for, here's a great example, like, what, what did I do to make this guy spawn? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that kind of thing that's just like, even if, you know, how fun was that? Just trying to de just trying to depuzzle the world. How do I make the world work? How do I work this, this machine of a world? That's fun. Um, and, oh, I think I discovered a thing. And I get to be the guy that figured this thing out is, is a thing. That's super fun. Um, so, yeah, that question just touches. I, I don't know any specific answers of something that's... Um, undiscovered but that question in itself is very uh it touches on the thing that i thought that the, just that arg right like i i love that 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 community people getting together to try to figure stuff out together mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, there's magic in that and the, the fact we talked about this the other day too right uh, one of the things that i really miss about everquest is just that it was hard, right? The world was yeah. punishing, hard, unforgiving. And, um, you know, I've debated with designers about how, oh my gosh, I, I, I got killed in this game and I lost an hour's worth of experience. And that was it. I walked away and dude, that happened to me. I'm like, 
it, it, that was glue, right? Yeah. I'm here. This is home. This is, you know, so maybe it's niche. I get it, but oh my gosh, that is a compelling, it's a compelling niche that this, this world is unforgiving and hard and we need to group together to try to inch our way forward. Right. Um, I've got, I've got a big smile right now because I have a feeling there's a number of people in chat that are like, did, did you tell them to say that? We've, so we've been on that topic now for, for, you know, a couple months. It's been picking up steam, but it's like, yeah, hell yeah, it's, it's a niche thing. But let's say we lean into that. Oh, yeah. Like, what is this game? What does it look like? How do we, how do we have a game that 20 years later they haven't found all the shit? Dude, it and was punishing. It's magic. It is. There is something there that was abandoned, that was thrown away. There was a lot of, um, and this is, it's, it's really interesting, right? Um, obviously, I, dude, I work with some, I, in, especially when I got to World of Warcraft, just amazing design minds, sharp design minds, super, I mean, uh, I had to, coming out of EverQuest, I, I'd played some World of Warcraft. I'm like, okay, I'm going to show these guys how it's done. I'm going to get in here and have some fun. Oh my gosh, dude. It was Design Harvard getting in there and just everybody from Rob Pardo to Chris Metz to Alex Afraziati, Jeff Cow, everybody was aware of everything. It wasn't this tribal knowledge, you know, thing that you could kind of, like, like EverQuest that you could kind of come in and forge your own thing is like they were super aware and all these decisions that were made were talked about and uh, the creativity was just there on on the tip of all their tongues. Chris Metz and that guy is one of my absolute heroes. Um, mm. Just being in a room with that guy when you're trying to solve a problem, he he just over. I would say oversolves is just like, dude, I just came in looking for an answer to this thing. And now you've just thrown this like epic. I mean, he just lights you up. Your, 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 you know, your face is like peeled back, just a font of creativity. And it's just fun to watch him, watch him spin and go. Yeah. And now I just walked myself into a rabbit hole. I forget what we were talking about. Uh, the difficulty of the game. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot of things, it's not bad game design, right? It's, it's just a very different game, right? When I'm yeah, talking just to different. people that, that like experienced designers that come into, wow, brilliant people that have done some amazing things in the industry. And you've got to relearn stuff because yep. there's, there's good game design and then there's good like world of Warcraft design, for example. Uh, or good, you know. Now EverQuest, it's it, it it's got its it's got its feel, it's got its flavor. It's it's been built on a lot of subjective decisions, not right wrong. Just this is the kit of this game. This is what right. we're making, and uh, it was more Wild West with EverQuest. I don't know that there was so much. It wasn't so much codified. We went off to our four corners and we came back together and we had different zones for better or for worse. And sometimes it felt like going from one zone to the next was playing a different game. So that, that was definitely a drawback of that. Yeah. And, and once you, I would say in the sort of that period of time when you went um, to digital, which we'll, I think we'll, we'll probably get to uh, this evening. Um, like over time, we started to try to address that more and more. Um, and centralize certain things like itemization and other stuff like that, just because we recognize that. Um, well, actually, were, I don't. I don't know if we. In hindsight, I recognize the value of people going off and really just everything not being so polished and people putting some individual character into different zones and all that. But the thing we really wanted to address then was just like, all right, but there does need to be like a red thread, and people, the other designers, do need to be aware of what's going on in the parts of the world that type of stuff yeah so that was a thing i remember talking to jeff butler about back in the day was just like hey we've got it it, it, it gets to be or at least for me it was a problem when hey this npc over here is saying hey this is true hmm. and then we've got an npc halfway across the world that's saying no this is true and and it, you know everybody's got the best of intentions but when we don't communicate you have that and i remember he answered that it's just like well that's their truth that's their truth and I kind of swallowed hard, and moved past. It's like I, I didn't. It didn't sit well with me, but I got where he was coming from. It was just yeah. the way he was kind of managing this team. It's just like, no, you guys just go, go nuts, just make crazy cool stuff. And um, 
yeah, it was it, it was inevitable, right? The game got more popular than it was expected to, and um, it was probably overdue. I remember we were starting before I left to um, look at things, especially itemization. Um, not to call out any specific thing, John Capozzi. Uh, oh, did sorry. I love John. What was the dungeon that he put uh, the shaman uh, haste on weapons? It was the sleeper's tomb, right? Was there? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it, was it Jonathan good. immediately popped, and I was like, "Oh, I forgot." Sorry. Prime, I oh, prime. The yeah. primal, the avatar buff. That's what it was. I love John. He's a blast to work with. So I apologize. No, no, no despair. I've done way worse than, than that. I've, I've um, been trying to track him down. I'd love to, I'd love to pick his brain on here as well. Um, he, I don't know that he'll ever, ever come on, but it would be fun. He'd be a fun interview. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so sort of going back and grabbing some of these other questions. Cause as I, as I mentioned, like, I was like, Oh yeah, Vanguard, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we want to talk about. And there's even more questions popping up in chat. So I want, I want to nail a few of these, Steve, did you keep a repository of data from each expansion? So much has changed from, uh, then to current live and other expansions were more favored. Um, yeah, even TLP isn't accurate to era anymore. So do you, do you have like a pile of design notes? No, I, I mean, maybe I, I've, I've got some things that I've just kind of, kind of locked away. I remember we, we moved recently and I found a bunch of sigil stuff like hand drawn. I think I hand drew the map of Thestra and a few other things that were just like, Oh, Hey, this was, this actually turned into something real. I might, I don't know. It would probably be a lot of, um, graph paper with a lot of just meaningless notes and coordinates trying to keep track of the stuff that I was building. It wouldn't be any kind of a library or anything comprehensive that would be valuable to anybody. It would be nonsense. Oh, you'd be shocked. You'd be shocked. I'm sure someone would love it. It'd make a wonderful Christmas gift. Um, if you find anything at all, if let I me know. It. I'll, I'll pay for the shipping. We'll have it as a giveaway here. It'll help. It'll help fund my secret project. Um, so let's see. Um, Zoidberry asked, looking in hindsight, what would you change about the Luckland from a game design standpoint? I.e., a lot of people complain about the bazaar. Oh, wow. Yeah, the bazaar was its own unique problem, right? I think that's probably been looked at to death, I'd have to guess. Right. I mean, it was, it, it was unintended, but then just it was obvious people were doing things that just were, were crazy so uh, who did who did whose idea was the bazaar i don't remember uh, I, I remember in todd's todd's um one Is of his todd? appearances that makes sense. Uh, i remember him discussing it in detail like sort of the origins um and for those of you that are maybe new here i haven't done a lot of like commercials and stuff in the middle of this but just real quick um when we reference like previous VODs or whatever, you can find all of them on that link I just put in the chat. Uh, and this one, as a matter of fact, as soon as we're done here tonight, I try to get them up as quickly as possible. I'll trim down all my bullshitting at the beginning and anything that happens at the end, make it a nice tight Steve package and then put it up there for you. So- um stop saying that. Steve package. Uh, let's see. Uh, the- Oh man, this is a long one. Let me, I'm going to skip this longer one so I can read it first. And then that way I'm not rambling through something in a second. Uh, Finro asked, even yeah, while no it's a totally different here. game, do you take inspiration from EQ um, into EQ2's development? And then I'll add another one onto that um, that wasn't in here, but I saw um, Nick asked, does Alex ever talk about the good old EQ days? Oh, that's a great question. So remind me of that second question because okay. that's that's a, that's another rabbit hole. Uh, the first one, sorry, I'm scattered. Uh, what was the first one again? So the first one is um, do we do we do a draw from EQ and yeah, EQ two? Did you, did you pull anything from EQ into? Um, so 
Yeah, it, it's one of the things that I just encourage my designers all the time. Just draw from everything, right? Mm -hmm. Just get that list, get your list where, where when you, you know, look at your list of just like, oh, this geeked me out. This, this was amazing. And it can be something that you played in. Wow, that's just was super amazing. And maybe you can put a new skin on it, make it your own. Um, maybe it's something from a game that you've worked on. Maybe it's something from a game that you just played last night, right? Uh, so, yeah, I think I think as designers, right? We we just draw from from life experience in general, just everything. Yeah, yeah there's no question. I mean, EverQuest absolutely shaped me. There's no no doubt. And then the second question was Alex stories. <sighs> Yeah. So the reason that triggered something is, um, is coming to wow. I remember dude, my first couple of years at wow were hard. They were hard for, for a bunch of reasons. Um, I was, I was commuting from San Diego, the housing market was Ooh. a crazy time. It was, Gosh. it was brutal. Right. And we were working some crazy hours, wanted to get some awesome stuff in. Uh, like I said, I wanted to come in and just kind of roll up my sleeves and, 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 and go nuts. It was one of the things that was really interesting to me when I got there. Uh, well, uh, first, when we were on EverQuest, we were hyper aware, I think all of us, of the community and when they would play stuff, we'd rarely, I, we didn't really have streamers back then. So it was just like reading the boards. What are people doing? What are they saying? What are they thinking about our stuff? Or hide and snoop. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's like, right. That's right. We let the cat out of the bag, I guess, a while back on that one. But it's like, yeah, I'd just sit there and listen to your damn guild and your messages and everything else while, while being visible. Uh -huh. Oh, man. Yeah. That's especially on, on PVP servers, right? Um, it was such a bigger deal to exploit because as a player on a PVP server, it was like, you know, it's super competitive. It's, yeah. it, it, wow, it was crazy. Uh, so if somebody's exploiting and zooming up in levels, that's just extra not fair. So I was extra sensitive about that. So yeah, I'd find somebody that's exploiting and I'd listen to them and they'd be teaching somebody else how to exploit and you'd just kind of get this. Anyway, yes. Uh, watching watching the forums, right? We Alex uh, and Jeff Kaplan, in particular, mm. ha they had thoughts. They did have thoughts. Yeah. They were passionate players and very good players. Uh, yep. Alex led fires of heaven. Jeff was in Legacy of Steel, right? Yeah. Uh, I remember we were doing, what did we call it? Was it the best of the best or something? Me and Gary Grobson would. Yeah, the PvP uh, thing, right? Best of the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I remember uh, I remember Jeff Kaplan when I was uh, hosting one. He he won his server, uh, which was great. Super, those were fun. Laggy, but fun. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so going to, uh, uh, moving, moving to World of Warcraft after having read all of their posts, dude it was one of those i talked to my wife i'm like i don't know if i want to do this i don't know i mean i do I, I this game's amazing and people are just loving it and i think i could do some crazy cool stuff there but you know these guys are my are going to be my boss this is going to be nuts i know i know what in in the thing that, that was tough for me is jeff kaplan is freaking amazing that dude is He's not only just a superstar designer, he's, he's a brilliant guy, but he is the best guy I've ever seen at giving feedback, um, which now I'm finding, you know, it, it's an art. It's, it's, it's something that's super, it's super important for me to help steer you as a designer. Nope, you, you're going to burn your hand on the stove there. Sometimes, especially if the schedule allows it, okay, go ahead, get a couple blisters. Those are good. Those are good. Uh, it, but uh, finding a way to deliver that feedback of, okay, I've played what you've gotten. This is, these are the things that are going to need to change to make it better. And here are the lessons that you can carry forward to try to uh, maybe avoid some of these pitfalls. That dude was so good at, um, 
and sitting down and, and like breaking things down and talking me through, you, you would leave and you would, there's, there was no escaping the message of this needs to get better, right? So my example will be, I built Chartool, if any of you guys know what that is when I first got there. Everybody was heads down working on Burning Crusade and nobody really had time to train me. Um, I got a real whirlwind tour of this enormous tool. Uh, so I figured I'm going to do something crazy complex and I'm going to come out the other side knowing the tool, right? So I'm going to just jump in the deep end. So I made this crazy complex event and it took, I'm not going to lie, months, like two and a half months for me to oh. build this thing. It was crazy. It, it, yeah, obviously, right? So, um, but at the same time, like everybody else was crunching, it's like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to solve these problems and fix these bugs and learn by doing it. And I did. I, I learned quite a bit. But at the end, it was just like, okay, this is this would have been a better place for this event. The way that he delivered that feedback was just masterful. Super, super nice guy. And, um, you know, still made you feel really good about what you've done. And then moving forward, you, there was no That's escaping amazing, the man. lesson. The guy is, is just That's a master at it. But the thing of it is, is the whole time he's doing this, I'm I'm thinking about his posts in my head, like, you know, <laughs> that's, a, that's a bit of a, you know, a was, weird I, was it his? Was it his that was like, there's just a team of monkeys chained to their desks, or you know, just I, I, honestly, I, that could be either one. I, I, it could. So yeah, it was that. It was that. Um, like, dude, I know what you're really thinking. Just give it to me straight. I know what you're thinking. Uh, but, but yeah, still, um, I hold him up as an example of, of, of just a really good leader in that regard. Um, super good guy. So Alex, a lot more cut and dry. Uh, again, met, dude, I, I was amazed at, at what a, a great design mind these guys had. Um, you know, Alex, I think, hadn't done game design before, but played the heck out of EverQuest. And so uh, that was w when I got there. Man, that guy was just, his mind is like a steel trap. It was, um, he, I learned a lot from that guy. Super, super sharp. Um, but again, right, just that, those first couple, you just, it was intimidating. It was intimidating. Yeah, work I can imagine. Guys. Yeah. I can imagine. Um, and yeah, the the interesting thing too is just the realization when, when people like ask questions about that period or what are your thoughts or whatever. I'm like, the so here's the challenge, man. Like, um, sometimes sometimes the, the players didn't have all the information or didn't understand circumstances, and so there's mischaracterization or there's a, maybe a lack of empathy um, that could have been added or whatever. But on the flip side, they're real good. They're real smart. Like the fact that they were able to basically, you know, do the theory craft, do the reverse engineering of the logic and everything else, or sometimes just spot the obvious gap in logic, et cetera. It's like, all right, so what am I going to say to that? And so like, I think, um, you know, the, the other reality that I mentioned at the time, um, or the other reality that I mentioned is at the time, you know, especially as we were entering like planes of power, like where basically as planes of power was just starting and then kind of restarted as everybody was leaving, we had most of the, the most experienced people like Rich Waters. Um, we had Rich Waters and is one other right? designer. I'm not going to say anything profane with Rich's name. Um, so yeah, Tricky Dick was like the experienced designer. And then we had, uh, I think David was the only other person with some industry experience. The rest of us were all apprentices for the most part. And it was like, okay, go, right? And so um, the the thing is, it's like, when I when I look back, I know for sure I wasn't as good a designer. And I was nowhere near as good a designer as Alex or Jeff were players, period. Yep. And yep. maybe even designers at that nope. point, if you thought about it. But the my my job was to step up and make sure that we could deliver shit, you know, and like keep going. You just go for it, and it's intimidating, but that is the situation. Dude, you touched on so much stuff right there, right? I mean, that they yes, it, it, we know it was wild west, and there was, um, you know, people that were really knowledgeable about EverQuest and how it played at a high end. And there were some designers that were just less less familiar with some of that stuff. It was 
there were plenty of holes to poke in the game. There's no question. And they found them all, I think. Uh, But yeah, it was one of the things that was really crazy to me. Like, okay, this is, uh, this is game development. I'm going to go and apply for this job. And I got there and I remember applying for the GM job and they had a conversation about actually making me a designer right out of the gate. I didn't know this until later because I had multiple level sixties. And at the time, even on the development team, that was like, yeah, that was enough. So it's like, Oh, this guy knows, you know, we, we, enough about the game. He's, um, gonna, you know, could be valuable. Anyway, I wish they would have, that was, um, you know, I will say like my last statement, like I'm speaking about the way I felt about myself. I think one of the things that did come in was even as people like you were leaving, you know, we, we got additional people like John Troy and other people and right, you know, like more and more people were, so I think did have the, the higher end experience that did have more familiarity with the game were able to come in. And then again, we, as a team had to sort of diligently acknowledge where our weaknesses were and go to those people and go, does it work this way? And if not, like, or what do I need to watch? What do I need to read? You know, like what, what form posts I need to go to to basically learn. So. Yeah, dude, I still, I contend that EverQuest happened in spite of itself. Yeah. It was, um, I, I, if you watch like the making of Star Wars, for example, and just how, just by the hair of a thread, that thing ended up getting kind of pushed out and just changed so much about our culture. And, and EverQuest, I think is very similar. I mean, just hearing all the stories about even before I got there, the contentions and the craziness and the touch and go and mutinies and just nuts, right? Yeah. And, it, and it just got kind of, it, it, it came together and and for a while it was it was like that just a lot of inexperienced people that were just like in a way there was value in that right oh, i think if, so. if if there was some you know there's a lot that wouldn't have happened if we were guided by some experienced design mind there's a yeah. lot that wouldn't have happened and like you said there's a lot of innovation that happened in that in those in those years um one of the questions that came up before um was have you noticed any change in what the gaming community for MMOs looks like nowadays as opposed to back then? Like grind leveling, long quests, short quests, people looking for more instant gratification, dungeon finder, etc. How do you think this will change game design on quests and character progression in the future? That's a crazy question. Sorry, I was reading another one at the same time. <laughs> Need me a repeat or you got it? uh yeah repeat that one for me please yeah so uh, essentially the summary of it is when you look at the differences sort of the evolution of the systems and like instant gratification on certain things like oh yeah you know, do, you, do you think that or how do you think that's going to change game design and quests and um uh, you know what i'll let you answer I, i've got i want to follow up on that one yeah i think um it's interesting to watch the industry, right? We find something that people can like, oh, I can reproduce this and reskin this and it becomes kind of a normal thing. And then somebody makes another thing, right? Like, uh, you know, Demon Soul, uh, is it De- Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls, thank you. The, the is it, what, Demon Souls? No, Demon Souls, Souls the first now, one. Right. Or yeah. The first one? Sorry, so man, my brain is, my brain's mush right now. Uh, Demon Souls, right, guys? Um, so something they'll they'll just come and break all the rules, and it'll be amazing. And it yes, just like I that game when again when it came out, it's just, I love this. I love games that are just so hard that you've just got to up, oh, I've got to grind, I've got to beat my head against this and unlock it. And and you, dude, there's something about us as people, right? That you know if you earn something. There's mm-hmm. something, you know, you can make this path to, uh, well, it's a great example, right? A lot, there's still rough edges, but a lot of them have been smoothed away and it just flows. And um, I think that, you know, you don't appreciate every little drop or quest reward necessarily when, when everything's 
you know, you, you kind of step back and look at the meta a little bit, I think. Um, sorry, I, I think that when, when things are hard and when you earn them, there's a def, it's a very big difference, right? It's yeah. like rating, rating and wow, yeah. I guess. Same, same, same kind of thing. It's just that challenge. When you overcome a challenge, when you finally down that boss. Um, it feels great. Yeah. Yeah. And people need hard things in their life. Um, That's, you know, yeah. especially that type of thing, hardship, not so much hard things, yeah. you know, like I'd challenges, say, right? Just challenges. Like the way yeah. Work. yeah. Yeah. And so, and it's funny cause I do think it's cyclical because this question comes up a lot in chat about like, well, can old school MMOs ever exist again? Or like, you know, can, can you ever go back and sort of recreate that? And, and again, it kind of goes back to the thing that we we were talking about, which is like, I, I, I see it as just a set of gameplay decisions. Um, I see it as potentially a genre that's just been kind of lost. Um, it, it's still there. I think the, the, it's, it's not necessarily the 10 million subscriber genre. Um, it, it is a strong niche genre. And so, you know, and that, that's, that's kind of like why I was mentioning like, oh yeah, shit, you know, escape from Tarkov. Like we were talking about that a little bit and stuff. It's like, whoa, all right. It's one of those things that as soon as I started playing, I was like, I didn't realize I needed this in my life. And I do, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I think it will come in waves, especially now with it being easier than ever to do distribution, to do marketing yourself, to get word out there. If you're only looking for 10 or 30 or 50,000, you know, players or subscribers, I, I, I'm, this is my hobby horse. You know, this is the thing I keep saying, I, I think we'll see more of them. It, it just make a great game. It doesn't matter. Right. It's exactly what you said. They're just design decisions that you build upon. Um, you know, wow has made a whole lot of, and e e EQ, but especially WoW, I think, has made a whole lot of subjective decisions that just become, this is the kit of this game. This is the way that this game works. And then you build upon that and you, you hone it and you, you, you refine it. I think uh, there's a lot of baby with the bathwater, a lot of things that were thrown out that are not yeah. necessarily bad. And it wasn't that they were thrown out because they were bad. It's just, nope, we made different decisions. Or no, even no intentional. Question. It was just like, there was no point of reference. So it's like, now when we go back and look at it and we're like, oh shit, yeah, with hindsight, would I have done this and this? No, we would have maybe pushed harder to find a different solution. But the thing that we did became a standard, you know? Um, so we, we sort of bounce in and out of wow. Um, what I'm curious is, do you want to speak at all to Vanguard? A lot of people come in here with a lot of sort of love for Vanguard. There's, you know, people, some people playing, I guess, Vanguard emulated. Um, there's, there's a lot, especially, you know, depending on who I have on, like there are a lot of feelings about Vanguard. I have some. I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, there's probably been a lot that's been that, that, that's out there that's been that's been said it was a tough it was a tough time man it was that that was i think that we had um we made a lot of decisions it's it's hard to put into words there were so many different different things there right um well i mean you've got you've got some you've got some bad you've got some good you've got some i mean a lot of what people mention is is one of those games where we're like wow like they saw diplomacy comes up or you know like some of these different things come up or oh, like man. you know the crafting or just the world size and, and so here's what i'll say about vanguard i guess is we were all nobody nobody there was there to say no if there was anybody that would have said no then they wouldn't have lasted long there right it was let's get together um and just make the most amazing thing. And we just piled in all these ideas. And I call that kind of the spitball phase of, you know, where we're creating an expansion or creating a zone, right? Just let's get together and just pile in all the really cool ideas that could happen in this space. Right. And what we didn't do is then step back and look and group those things together. And like, okay, these ideas fit with these ideas. These, these ideas win. This is what we're building, right? Hmm. It was we're building all of this 
and um, yeah. so scoping was not a part of that process. So I was there, uh, you know, just to be clear, I was there for the first four years. Um, Which it's and, four years, dude. <laughs> it, it is. It was. It was a tough time. There were a lot of things, and I don't, you know, uh, I know everybody's heart was in their right place. It's not like anybody there. Uh, meant meant to do wrong it was just it was tough right it was tough for me to leave everquest for this this was mm. that it was just a really big dice roll it's like hey come be a founder of this thing and it's going to yeah. be the successor of everquest it's going to be the next big thing and you've got a piece of the company here it's, oh well that's how things happen in the gaming industry it of, of course i need to do this right um i think i told you at first i said no <laughs> yeah yeah you did um and and stayed on everquest and then um you know, some things happened that that changed my mind so that was a really tough call and then when i got there um yeah it, it pretty much every nightmare story that i've seen in game development about how crazy and how rough it can be i think there was a version of that that happened at sigil mm -hmm. um it was a crazy ride but it also gave me just so much perspective right um you learn a whole lot about what not to do sometimes. Yeah. And, and I mean, the thing you mentioned though, too, it's the scope thing. Like I've seen that yeah. it's, it's a, I mean, I've joked in the past that the reason why I became a producer instead of staying on to be like a creative director, right? Like, cause I was like, I, I felt I was an okay designer. And it's like, which route do I go? But so much of what, I felt like the value I could bring to a, um, a team was like looking at something going, all right, I get the intent. I know how amped we are about this, but I also know what we've been doing historically, or I understand the weaknesses or the strengths that we have at the moment or whatever. Like we're bullshitting ourselves if we can, we think we're going to do all of this. Like, how do we refine this? How do we cut this out? I was like the fun police. It was like, all right, this all sounds fantastic. Now let me, try to burst the bubble and go, we actually need to ship this shit. Like, so how are we going to do that? It's crazy, you know, and then, and then even once you, once you define what it is that we're going to build, right, then there's feature creep after oh, that. Every time. Because it, it's kind of like what you said is, okay, I'm going to build something. I'm submitting this. This is a thing that we kind of thought and maybe paper designed a little bit here. And then we all play it together and we look at it. And of course, I mean, this happens a, a, a lot with us, just brilliant design minds in the room. We all play it and we turn around and we talk and it's like, okay, here's how to make it amazing. Yeah. Right? If we do this, this, and this, boom. And um, that is definitely something, it's part of the, the magic at Blizzard is just, you know, digging those ideas out and then really polishing up polishing them up and, and trying to deliver something super special it can it can be dangerous it, it, it blizzard it, the thing is that we just had there, there was enough talent there on the team that we could dig deep and pull it off mm. um, a lot a lot of times uh, so yeah it but it is it, it's it's an important part of that um you know step back and look hey being honest with ourselves about what are the capabilities of our team? What can they really do, right? We want, we want not to kill people and crunch them. You know, that we, we know long-term that's not healthy. So let's get realistic about what we can pull off. And the nice thing about World of Warcraft, right, is this long game. It's, it's been around for so long and we've got this team that we can kind of, you know, I can imagine every two years starting a new game with a new team, you can't oh, really, oh, yeah, you can't really hone that in, right? But now we've been able to like, okay, these are the metrics. This is what we can, this mm -hmm. is what we can expect. This is what we can achieve. This is where these people really are. And figuring out and being honest with ourselves about, um, what we can pull off that's that's a that's a discipline yeah and do you think that i mean is that what i what i've seen is if that's not really coming from the top yeah it's a challenge because how do you how are you if you're like an assistant lead or a lead or whatever you're, if you're three steps down from the authority how do you go hey we need to pull the brakes this is this is bad shit. this is going to get done like to me, it seems like it's got to come from the top. 
It does, right? I mean, it's it, it's that thing. Um, it, it was one of the magic things about coming to Blizzard is everybody all the way up to Mike Morheim was really intimately familiar with what it was that we were doing. Mm -hmm. And that's rare, I think. Yeah, it is. Um, and, and, it, and it's special. So we're all talking the same language and their hearts are all in the right place. We want to make something absolutely amazing. And we're not going to settle for anything less, but at the same time, yeah, it, trying to find that, trying to find that balance, but having the people at, at the top, I think for me, that that's the biggest thing. That's the rule is making something super special. When, when the rule is you're going to ship something by this date, and, you know, obviously you've got to have those goals as well. But, but when that's the driving force, I think that that changes things quite a bit. Yeah, it, it does. Um, it, it was interesting during that period where it was like, we, we, we started to understand we're going to be shipping expansions pretty regularly. Like, um, and I think what helped was at the time, the producer that we had, Actually, I feel like you did a really good job of instilling in us like, okay, if you know you're going to ship, like if the constraint is ship date, then we need to be real clear about like talking about realistic scope and really have our shit together on like, all right, so that's our constraint. We'll have to live with it. Cool. Now, what can we do within that where we're not fixing shit two weeks after it was supposed to go live and everything just like you worked all the pencils down is not when the you know expand when the servers come up pencils down like let's work our way back and and then even if it's we know there are some bugs sit on your hands for a week two weeks make sure you don't break any new shit don't add any new shit have a clear list of what needs to be fixed when it goes live right so it's like it's not ideal but I do, I, I see that missing in a lot of other places that, you know, I've sort of poked around or been at or whatever, where it's like, oh, but we have this constraint of time. Okay. Well, we know that, right? That's not an excuse to deliver shit. Right. So, yeah, it's that competing thing and you have to have it. Yeah. Right. It, 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 if we never had a ship date, then we'd just keep noodling on stuff. We're just designers and it's never good enough. Right. Yeah. And having, having people with that. 40,000 foot perspective, right? That are, we get close to it. And, you know, when I'm working directly with designers and I'm playing this stuff and we're just like, oh, you know, this and this, this needs to happen. But having somebody with that perspective who can look and say, no, you guys are super close to it. Everything, everything's great. And we, we just need to polish what's it. just having that perspective really helps having somebody with those eyes for sure. Yeah. So, um, so somebody asked something. I'm sorry. Somebody asked something that I wanted to answer. And okay. it was something along the lines of, do I think that somebody could get into the industry the way that I did? Oh, yeah. I saw that one go by. And um, I interview a lot of people. And uh, I just want to encourage anybody who feels like they've got something to offer in this industry, especially from a creative uh, side, to, to do it, to jump in. With, yep. with both feet right i some of the people that i've interviewed with no experience have just blown me out of the water you know just being knowledgeable playing i i would just encourage you to play it you know play a bunch of games break them down what's fun about them what's not fun about them be able to talk about that i would also encourage you now there more than ever there's just so many tools that are accessible to people that don't mm -hmm. You don't need to know how to code, right? You can mm -hmm. grab a tool, you can build a thing, you can, you know, go through that go through that process, even if it's just for the for the exercise, right? I'm surprised at how few people come loaded with something like that to an interview. It's just like, hey, I built this Neverwinter Nights zone or something, right? And it's something that I can play through and then I can talk to them about their processes and, and really, you know, get into their brain and, and learn a lot about them and, and make some accurate calls. It's helpful. So, yeah, I would say don't, don't even think twice. Yeah. But, okay. but absolutely come in swinging, come in, yep. you know, really do your homework. Yep. And, and, and I, I've given, I've given that same advice and I've never felt really that I 
with being negligent, right? Because I know people are like, yeah, but it, maybe it's harder now, or maybe it's a different time, or people have like degrees and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, first of all, I don't think I've ever looked at somebody's full sale degree or something on a resume. I don't care. Um, like uh, we've received tons of great designs from schools or programs. Sure. I'm not disparaging it, but I'm saying like, I'm almost it always not, looking it, to see what they built. Yeah. And it's almost not uh, same here. And I'm not disparaging anybody, but it's usually not because of the school. It's just yeah. that person that had that drive is like when, when it's not, no, I just don't, I, I don't want you to just check the boxes of, Oh, okay. I did this, this, this. It's just, no, I, I came with this. I want to create something special and, you know, it just oozes out of people. So c come from that place, create stuff. Yeah. And think about how much, uh, this is one of those things because it's weird. Like, I've tried to answer this with a business card over the years, like every time I've, I've talked to other people like, man, like, why would you give that out? That person may bug you. I'm like, cause of the like hundreds of business cards I've given out, I've had maybe three actually follow up with me and maybe like two actually follow up with my response to their follow up. And then I think they're in the industry. Um, and it's like the, the thing that I tell people is like, kind of just determine whether or not you're being honest with yourself. Like if you're like, shit, how do I get in? Like, okay, well think about how you can get in. That one's fairly straightforward. I think Steve, you just gave a great answer on it. Um, think about what you're willing to sacrifice. Um, I packed my shit up and moved from Alabama in a U-Haul with like two cats, uh, you know, a, a girlfriend, uh, neither one of us, I think, no, she had actually been out West. I'd never been past Mississippi River, like drove into unknown territory had three days to find an apartment, got lucky to find one that would let me give her cash under the table. Um, and like got my job that I basically social engineered my way into at Variant with, with in those like three days, otherwise I would have been screwed. And then the rest of the time was doing a full shift of customer service, got my job, my girlfriend, a job in customer service so we could share a card. Cause what the hell else were we going to do? And then she slept on like, you know, Scott McDaniel, I think different different couches after our shift so I could work on being an apprentice to an apprentice to an apprentice because I think I really did want to get into the industry. So I th think there are- Doesn't sound like it. That was no, right? Bad. Like it's the same thing. Like you give up a great job, you know, to go, hey, lots of risk. And I don't say that because it's like, oh, this is my humble brag or war story or whatever. I'm just like, well, honestly, no, if it. you sacrifice, you can probably pull some cool shit off. I think that's true of just about anything in life, yeah, right? Absolutely. That kind of, I, I go back, Tony Robbins, he, he just does a, he, in my view, uh, he does a good job of taking a lot of information, just delivering it really well. And he does, he isolates on that just like, hey, what do you really want? What, what do you want? If this is something that you really want, how bad do you want it? Mm -hmm. Take massive action and make it happen, right? Absolutely. And there, you can you can push against that rock and and you can move the rock you just you know keep keep pushing no matter where you're at so yeah it doesn't always have to be that that hard, hard of a story but it, it is i would say just hopefully for the right reasons right i've known people that are just like oh i just want to be able to say, I'm, a, I'm a game designer right oh that's a veteran game designer i blah 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 and uh <laughs> it, it, it's 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 important right that it's it's not that that it's not just that academic you know i i, I can talk with authority kind of thing at least for me yeah, i'm I'm, uh, I'm just speak, speaking for just have that passion to create stuff that i mean we're we're a dopamine delivery service right i just it lights me up more than anything just watching people do um playthroughs and streams of stuff that we've created and when we when we talk in a room of creatives right and we jam and you know we get really excited about stuff and we get goosebumps and like i said i mean chris metzen can just probably do it in his sleep just get you just super pumped up about something but we sit around and we get get ourselves stirred up and then there's that veil of the tool that i talked about and then there's yeah. what we actually deliver and i felt like um you know gradually it's one of the nice things about working on a game for this long and being able to like just really refine it and get it to where 
you see that guy on the other side of the veil that's playing your stuff. And he's saying the things that we said in our meeting that gave us goosebumps mm. almost verbatim. It's just like, this is the story that I'm playing through. And it's probably, it, that's, that's magic. Right. And just wanting to, wanting to deliver, you know, hopefully that, that joy, surprise and delight people that if you're coming from that space, man, that uh, for me, that's what's super important. And, you know, nothing else matters, right? We're not <sighs> kings of the world by any stretch, right? No. <laughs> but we've got a lot of experiences that we've, you know, in, we've had the 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 gift of being able to um, to deliver great, you know, to just seeing people just reminisce about some some of the stuff that we've done, man. That's a that's a gift. That's special. Uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it's just it's a it's a crazy concept to know that this it's a thing that still exists, right? Like, I mean, we were in these zones. All right. So when was, when was Lachlan? Was that 2002? I mean, 2004, I think it shipped. Is that right? Is that not right? No, that couldn't be it. I can't imagine it being 2004. I think 2004 was like when I was done with EQ. I started in 99 Mm -hmm. and we just shipped, we were just shipping Kunark. Is it 2002? Yeah. Oh, grief. That we shipped Luckland? Yep. Luckland was 2002, dude. Because 2004, I was kind of wrapping up my time on UQ, and that was Owen's War. Um, wow. Yeah. So this is 18 years old. Like these, these Captain Ontario over here has been yelling at these dudes for 18 years. Where are you? And he's still way? doing it. Um, I honestly, I had to look earlier because I was like, what the hell is the name of the zone again? Um, All I know is it's not Crush Bun. Shade Weaver. Yeah, I did not. I didn't go to, I didn't go to Crush Bun for you, buddy. I thought we could like, I thought you wanted to That was just one some. of my, that was just one of my as a player, right? Just, just zoning. I don't know. It's just one of those zones. I'm sure we've all got our own just like spots that, that just evoke that. I said my other one was unrest, just sitting and watching those trains and unrest. Dude, oh, getting to go back in there out. and like camp and like pool and just spend hours in there with Air Dune coming, um, coming up, it's just been a blast. And honestly, I know a lot of it's nostalgia, but a lot of it is just like, it, yeah, it just felt good again. Like it was so much fun just sitting there and hours melted by. Like every time I sat down, I'd look up and like three, five hours had gone by. There's so many elements, right? When I think about EverQuest, there's so many elements there that have just been dismissed right? It, it just, it's almost unfortunate that there's this monolithic MMO that kind of takes all the air out of the room. There's just so many elements of, of this game um, that, that are alluring to me. I remember one of the things that I, I wished that it was next on, on kind of my to-do list is I wanted to play around with, and this is dangerous, but play around with the idea of making dungeons a little bit dynamic Mm. right because you would one of the things that bugged me was logging in and going to lower guck and oh everything's camped and you get in some kind of queue or whatever uh or hope that you know the whole place turns into a mess and a train and we get to reset (laughs) it or whatever and so what if, right, one out of 10 times that, what was it? Was it the Froglock King? I'm going to say wrong stuff. Oh, I remember this place. Yeah, I, I'm watching your rich, face right now. So I'm kind of, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm going to run through here real quick and see if I can kick off some nostalgia bombs. Um, Old World would be so much better. This was, oh my gosh. PTSD is more. No. Well, maybe a little bit. For, yeah, this expansion was just just picking ourselves up off the mat and throwing ourselves at this thing. But yeah, what if one, one out of 10 times, you know, you kill the, is it the Froglock King? The Ghoul Lord. Thank you. I did say it wrong. It, the, it triggered an event, right? Where, you know, a bunch of his henchmen just spawned and came to his to his aid and kind of cleaned went up the camp and, for and you. Turn, turn things out. So you've always got to be, and maybe there's five different versions of how that happened, right? That kind of dynamic where, okay, we're sitting here because 
people just just got so comfortable like okay i know everything that can possibly happen in my little neck of the woods here in my little nook right i know what to watch for i know when the trains can come and where they're coming from and we've got this thing just on lockdown and what if there was more to it, right? You'd still eventually get it on lockdown, but just there's just more things that you've got to be aware of and ready for and dynamic things that could mix that up. So that was that was the thing that I never got around to being able to play with that I was I was kind of excited about. And I still think, right, even, you know, I've 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 pitched it and wow, just having uh, you know, we wait. So, so if you pitch this idea in wow, does that mean we can't steal it for our secret project? Well, no, you said it on stream. It's it's fair we, game. Yeah, there's no it's public there, domain. You know, ideas are free. Um, so, well, I more than pitched it, right? So, one of the first things that uh, Kaplan let me do was uh, Zulaman, and that was kind of my effort. It 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 got polished by some other guys that helped kind of give me feedback, but basically it was this dungeon where, uh, you know, you'd run it like a normal dungeon, but then when you're running it for the 12th time to get your buddy, his gear, or whatever it might be, instead of your eyes just kind of rolling to the back of your head, yeah. you've got something extra to shoot for. So if you got all these things done in a certain amount of time, there was a special mount uh, that, that you'd get. Right. So it, it is it, it that morphed. Right. It, 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 but that's a version of what I'm talking about mm-hmm. to where, you know, it just kind of keeps you on your toes and keeps you stretching for stuff. I, I don't like it when people there, there, there is there's there is goodness in being able to just kind of throw on your music and just kind of go out and kill stuff mindlessly. I totally get that. I don't want that not to exist. Yeah, that's, that's but, that, that is my type of game. Oh yeah, right. I mean, there's, the, but but then when it's time for us to group up and go do a thing, right? Where we've got, I just want you to, I want you to be on the edge of your seat. I want you to pay attention. I want you to not know, you know, what what might be around that corner. Right. You know what I mean? Um, the the elements that you have when you first go into a place. We talked about, we talked about, uh, you know, the rewards of EverQuest, how, how for me so much, I remember it was weird, man, when starting to work on World of Warcraft, it's like, man, I can, as a player, I can just go anywhere for free. And that was a weird thing. And it got me thinking, it's like, dude, I remember some of the most rewarding times that I had in EverQuest weren't an item drop, but it was like, oh my gosh, the first time I made it to the fire giants on, you know, I can't kill Nagafin yet, but we turned that corner and I fought a fire giant. I died, but I fought, I got to see that, right? right. That was like, I earned that screenshot even, you know, just, just working, just having to scratch and claw your way and social engineer your way into groups that could get you to those places. Mm-hmm. It's magic. It's, it's just, uh, I don't know. I don't know of any place else that has that right now. You yeah. I mean? and, and right now, I like that you put that on there, right? Because so, so often it comes back as like, a, well, but it was our first MMO or it's a different time or the internet didn't exist. And so you couldn't look up shit and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, those are facts for sure. But I do think there there is something to just being like, in a in a world where there's that scale, and and there's sort of the you know the unexpected if you haven't gone through and spoiled it for yourself potentially or, or the world is dynamic enough that you know you have that giant in the corona moment right like for me one of the one of the just like it's probably the 15th time my mind had been blown that week but like that first week or whatever it's like you know when it's like let's venture into the coronas i guess and kind of let's see if we can make it across this thing and like talking to somebody that you're with and not paying attention and kind of hearing the boom, 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 and then looking up and going, holy shit, this thing is huge. This is a giant. Like it, it, it felt like my, you know, the Hobbit moment or whatever. Like I was on a big adventure. I think that can be recreated. Um, oh yeah. I, I, I totally agree. Just that I, so we touched on it before, right? That sense of the unknown, like what, what can happen in this world? Dude, I've heard stories of, yeah. you know, was it AVX? Did AVX. I did I totally butcher that? You I did it. I got it right this time. All right. 
but yeah, those things that can happen. And that's what I was kind of getting at with the dynamic dungeon thing is just that like, it's interesting because there was also, there was also that dynamic, right? You had those guys and you wanted to be that guy or I did where you were, okay, I'm going to take you guys. I'm going to, I I can't find another group. So I'm going to take you group of scrubs that have never been into (laughs) this place. Right. And I'm going to show you the ropes and I'm going to tell you, okay, around this corner, this thing's going to happen. Right. And so you had those characters, those people that would do that. And they were so necessary. I remember just being at their mercy, like, Oh, you know, thank you so much for, for bringing us through this. There's no way we would have lived on our own. You know, we would have lost our corpses or whatever. Yeah. that's interesting too so just having that 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 guide right it's it it's crazy it's like lewis and clark kind of stuff that's just like oh you, that you need somebody like that just a game where you need something like that it's just like, no you don't want to go you go over there you're never going to come back kind of or whatever right yeah it's funny you're describing that and it's kind of like that moment when your corpse is like when you fall into the the, the hole in blackboro like if you if you started on oh, the kino side yeah, yeah. and then you quickly find out where the higher level people are right oh, yeah. because you're like i gotta go find somebody and beg them to go get my shit for me dude and that and that that was it was a really interesting kind of human dynamic too i don't know i get it, get into the kind of the way that people think and operate and people there were a lot of nice especially on a pvp server where it was free for all pvp but people were really nice right it's just like you build up a reputation on that uh, on that certain people know you 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 know you have your friends list and you know people that you can rely on yeah. in that environment right when you go to war you know who you can who you could lean on kind of thing and I'm you know sure. That's how my guild started. Like, you know, before I came over to play with you on 7th, like when I was in a pretty small little chill, like mom and pop guild. But I think a lot of it was like, hey, you helped me out like three times. Or I grouped with you a few times and you're actually really awesome. Like, can we be like perma buddies? You know? Dude, uh, Ryan Barker, right? Uh, just played with him in you know, ended up, he was on my friends list. We'd play together and just ended up joining his guild years later. Yeah. Years later, uh, you know, he came out of college. I'm like, dude, come, you know, he, he knew as much about the game as half the guys on the dev team. So it's like, come on, get your foot in the door. So yeah, look at him. That's, that, I, turned, that, that turned out. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty damn. Okay. Usually he's in here. Um, like so guy. we can blame stuff on him. Uh, like I did, I didn't remember that at all. That's wonderful um yeah man yeah so it was I came great. We got my... go ahead oh sorry no you finish your story you, oh you dude, got I, your... i've been rambling and babbling this whole time well, yeah but that's bad. what you're here for no one wants to hear me talk um so i moved to hollow shade just oh, okay. because you know i thought it's been a while <gasps> oh that art good grief dude these trees are pretty funky yeah wild like the the so jonathan character told me that he actually i felt so bad that he actually came behind me now i guess they've got a better scripting system and he came behind me and we built all this stuff i was like you gotta be kidding yeah like pop basically once scripting was introduced like it opened the doors to do a lot better stuff but we never had the time to go back and fix the crazy stuff that was implemented in just the db like in a hacky script way so i think they had to come back and like really just try to figure a lot of shit out and i don't know how they did it bless them I, I yeah it's so tough um i think in any game going back in and kind of uh, unwrapping anybody's content and trying to rebuild it. I mean, we, we, it, it's hard. You, you get inside that designer's, what are you trying to accomplish here? Oh, you did this and you did it this way. And, and then I'm going to fix it. And then, oh, I ended up breaking three things just because they work so differently. Yeah. Right. So when he said he came in and rebuilt this and the ring war, I was like, oh my gosh, man, that, that's, I'm well. sorry. <laughs> These talented dude. I mean, I'm glad oh, that yeah. you know, glad that he was there to to be able to do it. 
Um, did you work on Cataclysm? Bunny asked. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, that was uh, when I was just talking about going in and remaking other people's stuff. Yeah, I did. Uh, we we looked at the world. And there were a lot of things that we wanted to kind of update because early WoW was very similar, I think, to to EQ. It was Wild West, right? If you if you remember, the intention with World of Warcraft was just go out and play the world and the questing i think stopped after the first 10 or 20 levels it wasn't meant to persist and go on and i think early in in alpha or beta people played it and they're like oh my gosh no this is great and it ended up becoming a thing uh so yeah going back and and uh and remaking a lot of the early stuff that people were just like us just kind of trying to make stuff work yeah, I think we underestimated a lot uh, about you know how how long that might take and how much work that was. And then, and then how did that wind up? Um, like, what did that look like? I mean, was it just it was like sort of was it a scramble? Was it it just you wound up having to take more time or? Uh, uh, we there was a lot of time. There was yeah. a lot of time. That was that was a really tough time for me because I was still. It was right at the end of when I was commuting back and forth from San Diego. So I did that. Kept waiting for the market to turn around, and it never did. And I finally just kind of tapped out uh, at that time and moved up here because that commute was killing me. Uh, but yeah, a lot of a um, lot of work went into into that, and then making the new zones uh, afterwards. Uh, I think I worked on Vashir and Oldham on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was a lot of lessons there too, I think. But it was ambitious. It was an ambitious expansion for sure. Yeah. Tennessee Feet Monk asked, is there any way to reach Steve in the future if we have specific questions about his EQ or WoW pass that we can't think of here and now? I will I will say for Steve, I don't know, you can always give out whatever info you want. Um, if you go into our Discord, we have a, a questions for guests section in Discord. At a minimum, if something lands in there and it's for Steve um, and he isn't you know, in our Discord or uh, doesn't have time or whatever, I'll still try to see if we can get it to him at some point. Um, you can throw my Discord info out there. That's fine. Cool. And see, then see copy paste it. one of the other things that uh, um, I'd like to do in the future is um, maybe get a few people together at the same time. I know everybody's got pretty crazy schedules depending on like when people are trying to get what done or whatever, but things lighten up at some point. I'd love to get, you know, I'd love to have like a discussion for example, it'd be cool to hear you and Todd talk about AAs or something, right? Like things like that where, because what I'm finding is every one of these discussions, it activates like 50 new memories. Oh, and yeah. like the, 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 so like when you were mentioning like GM names earlier and you're like, oh, is, uh, she was like a lead or something. I immediately start thinking of names because I've had the benefit of I, like, I don't know, 15 guests or 16 guests or something like, or at least different discussions so far. And so the puzzle's becoming a little more clear of like what was going on in the past. Uh, and so it's like, oh, okay, I've got more names, two of which we discussed on the stream, but now the third and fourth one just came to mind. So I would love to like, as time allows, also just to kind of stretch, you know, the content that is my network out as long as possible on the stream, let's be honest, guys. Um, you know, get you back in here with, um, you know, other folks as well and just be like, oh, shit. Lawrence I'm Poe. happy to, yeah. Yeah, Poe's great. Sit with Steve. I've talked to him a few times. Oh, yeah, that'd be a great time. Uh, you know, just just an idea. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, man, some of those guides that I worked with as a GM yeah. were just angels. You yeah. Know? And you know, maybe maybe pulling some of them and just uh, I can't thank them enough. They worked so hard. Absolutely, there there Great. are some guides um, that I would. I would uh, we have guides that come in here pretty regularly in chat as well. Um, and one of the guides that worked with me wound up in something to Sony going to Dayok, and so his he was going parallel to us the whole time, um, and so he came in as pretty good. I would I would also say like 
any other folks to be honest you know like people that are members of the community that have done cool shit like I've, I've reached out to a couple people that are youtubers etc just because i'm like i watch your videos they're outstanding so i'd love to have you come on and talk about it so yeah man if you think of anything on that front um let me know and yeah so i tell you what you've been here you've been gracious enough to be on for minimum three hours um so three hours flows by here when we have these discussions wow yeah, That's it nice. goes fast. It's uh, it's like the, well, how long was Denuser in here? Oh man, Denuser was like a solid four hours. I'm sorry, dude. Uh, I don't think you're gonna beat him. I, I actually think I don't just remember. sit here and look awkward at each other. We <laughs> gotta beat that. But uh, hey, guys, if the uh, Discord link is dead, I always cap it so there's no tomfoolery. What I can do is when we're done here, I will um, I'll just get you a new Discord link and like three minutes when we're done so um those of you that are I'll, I'll probably have to cut this out of the actual like youtube video or dude you're, you're going to be on spotify as well um and so like i have to edit this that part out but um yeah man three hours is super super gracious of you i don't want to miss anything there's a ton of extra shit that i would love to talk about but i also i'm trying to be conscious of your time um so well, thanks thanks for having me on man this was great to fun to reminisce it's crazy that was three hours yeah it goes by super quick so i always like to sort of remind folks like hey you may not realize it but um and yeah i like i said we're trying to kind of wrap up this project i'm spinning a million plates so i apologize if i'm kind of absent-minded but um super oh, no fun. way dude it was just so good to connect I tell you what, um, so we'll wrap this one up here. I'll follow up with you. I, I absolutely want to well, catch up somewhere outside of this. So before I go, I, d yeah. I just wanted to, so you're in Sweden now, right? I am currently in Sweden for a few more months. Okay, so it's a short-term thing. Yeah. Well, All right. I've been here for over three and a half years, but it looks like we're heading to Germany or back to Germany next. Awesome. Yeah. Well, great. Send me some pictures. That seems like a nice place to be absolutely it's it's been good i'll definitely i'll definitely shoot you some and congratulations some right oh yeah yeah this thing this was this was last week yeah it was last week uh we had made our wedding bands at a forge on a small island near here um like a month before that and so i saw that on facebook dude that's amazing pretty awesome so yeah it, i was excited to get a chance to finally finally wear did it did she still act act surprised uh, uh, about the ring oh she she acted super surprised when i gave her the ring that she designed and had made so her engagement yeah. ring was a whole nother thing she like, drew it and contacted uh you know a, a, a place she knew in hamburg and like basically they met it for and sent it to her and everything and then i stole it from her and then gave it back to her so is this your first like blacksmithing foray yeah yeah this well i might have or done something like, that you're doing no, it's not my side job. Um, it, it may be in the future. Um, with the, some of the decisions I make with like, hey, I think I'll quit my job and try to start a small company while streaming. Um, so at some point, we, we may get into making jewelry, stat bonuses, all that good stuff. Great. Oh, cool. Well, congratulations. Yeah, thank you, buddy. Thanks for listening to me babble. Yeah, Hit me up on. if we want to do it again. Yeah. I absolutely will. I'm not bullshitting on that front. Happy to. Cool. It's been super fun. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, Steve. See ya. I've got to figure out what's about to happen when when he clicks off. This is always that. Are we ready? Hold on one second. Let me let me find the. Why am I so bad at this part every single time, guys? All right. Here we go. I'm gonna make you blink out. Wait once. Boom, and he's gone.